Iskawarama Kusodo Somalila. I'm still here in Somaliland and I'm having the best time of my life. Yeah. Literally walking in the streets of Somaliland. Hey. Smooth, 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 no banana. <laughs> like I said, it's time to make Africa home again. I was in Ghana and Ghanaians that lived abroad are coming back to make Ghana home again. I was in Nigeria and I saw the same thing and I never knew the same thing is happening here in Somaliland. You know that things like this makes me so excited because I'm saying that Africa was being raped some time ago and we didn't have the strength to prevent Africa from being raped but it's time for Africans to resist from Africa being raped once again. It's your favorite village boy and I'm here in Somaliland but today you know what I'm gonna have an awesome conversation to a man who lived in the state and he's back in his home country to make a change and you know what how we do it we always have to go and find out who this man is but don't forget to like share and subscribe mr farhan yeah this is the third time i'm seeing you yeah, absolutely initially we met where i, I think safari hotel right safari team when safari i was gym. when i was playing table, table tennis. tennis it's like this guy is from ghana yeah because ghanaians are short but <laughs> we are the same height huh? <laughs> so definitely he's also from yeah, ghana so i want to know why did you leave somaliland in the first place Actually, when I first left, it was not Somali, it was Somalia. Uh, because there were, the reason I left was the, the, the part where I live in, which is Somalia right now, has been oppressed by the previous dictator, Siad Barre. And I actually either have to be... I was one of the kids who have actually started the uprising. Okay. So my parents thought that either uh, I might be get killed or I have to get out of the country. So I had the opportunity for them to fund me and send me to, uh, to Qatar because my brother, peace upon him, he passed away, Rashid. Mm. He took me to Qatar for two and a half years just for me to get some money. Then I went then, uh, to go to the States to get education. And as I told you, I, I became a Qadari army particularly the commandos unit and I, be, I excel actually <laughs> because I was a young man, very active, very energetic, uh, probably was one of the youngest members in the army. I became a commandos unit, Barry Truba. In fact, he, the current ruler of Qatar's father, he gave me a cup because I came in the second, uh, what do you call, second place for the karate, for the whole army in Qatar. So I had a good time there, and we get trained for the part, uh, what do you call it, part trooping in Jordan. And I had a chance also to be given the wing when you finish the by the previous ruler, the King Hussein himself has actually handed me that one too as well, because I was one of the best, by the way, uh, for the army. So they call it Jundil Mithal, which was the leading soldier. When there's a training, they, I was the one who, who does show the people how it's done. Oh, okay. Yes. So from how long did you stay in uh, Qatar? Two, two years, or probably two, three, two years, two, two, two years and a half. And so why did you leave? Oh, my, in, uh, my, my actual intention was to leave anyway, because I was trying to get some money and go back to the, st and go to the States for education. Oh, so you my other brother, my other brother, Abdullah, who was older than Rashid, he was in the States. I, he sent me a visa, education, uh, what, academic visa. Okay. Then I went to the States March 85. How long did you live in the state? 15 years. 15 years? Yes. What were you doing in the state? I went to school. Uh, in fact, I went to various different schools and various different subjects. And uh, mainly by community colleges. And uh, being there, uh, I saw there was opportunities that I could have excelled. <clears throat> I was go, I was working at the gas station, okay. and and uh, and going to school. At the same working, time. Yes. Then I became very much enticed about the business itself. I became. I used to manage the station while I was going to school. Then I thought about why don't I start it my own place, in my own business. Uh, believe it or not, uh, with the Mayo, I didn't have, I was zero, I didn't have any money. Then one day, 
one, one of my countrymen, Somalilanda, they took me from Auckland to Portland. I never had experience about credit cards and stuff. We were driving and by, by car, going through states, Idaho and all that, eventually went to Oregon. I want to know what you were doing in the state. Yeah, one of the reasons I went there was I was going to school. But at the same time, and uh, I, you know, I became fascinated to, to work there. So I was working at part-time at the gas station. Mm. I'm going to school at the same time. Then, which was a community college. Then I realized the business I was in, in fact, I was even better than the person who owned it, the business. Then I became <laughs> enticed to own my own self, one. You wanted to start your own business. That's the gas, gas station. station. Yeah, which, I, to be honest with you, I was zero. I, I didn't have any money but too. But you were in school. And I was in school. Then what happened, one day, one of my friends from Oregon came and visited me in Oakland, California. And this guy, by the way, the guy is here right now. But he doesn't know me. He doesn't know the way I did things. That guy was using a, what they call credit card. And I have never had a, never have seen it, the credit card. It was 88. And I went to the States, 85. Then I said, well, what is this, man? How come you're not paying uh, cash? He said, oh, this credit card, it works, this and that. Wow. I said, okay. We went to Oregon. I've been actually fascinated by, the, by that system. Then I, when we came back, I have applied credit cards. I get master and visa card from my bank, Bank of America, by the way, and with, with a limit of $300 each. Then I said, man, how can I actually utilize this uh, to benefit from this? I have learned how to ask increase, when to ask increase. All of a sudden, I accumulate other credit cards because I have a good credit record, almost like 70, 75,000 credit line of credit cards. And I could only cash it out from about 35. Another friend of mine, then I still live in Oakland, California, another friend of mine who came in for a wedding in Oakland, mm. which we grew up together, who used to live in Portland, they had a gas station. And um, business Portland. Oh, they visited me and I've told them, I manage this business, but I'm interested to, do, to, to buy business. O Oakland is in California. For California lifestyle is very expensive. Yeah. But Oregon was very cheap. So they told me, why don't you come there and see if you can get an opportunity to buy one. Definitely it's cheaper than okay. in, in Oakland. Then I went there. I looked almost about six, seven cities, including Portland. I, I didn't like any one of them except theirs. I, I flew in the next week. I bought that place, $110,000. With credit card? No, $110,000. But they only have equity of 35000 And I built it up. Two and a half years, I almost I used to work almost like 18 hours a day. You're not it was going to school anymore? No, I, start, I busted the school. <laughs> and I used to work, it was 24, 24 hours. The gas station was open 24 hours. I expanded the gas station to fast food as well. With the recipe of mine. I created a recipe, which is a Somali recipe, you know. Cayenne pepper, paprika, this and that. Wow, the gas station, I, I, I actually increased the sales almost like five, six, seven thousand percent. I used to work 18, 19 hours, almost. I only had four hours, five hours sleep. My house didn't even have a TV or anything. I used to just, one bed, used to sleep, come back to work. Because I was a young guy like you, strong, energetic. Two and a half years, that place I bought 110,000. I sold it about $475,000. Young man, healthy. I, I worked out with uh, over half a million dollars. Since I was a sub agent for the for 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 the ga for the gas station business, I have decided why don't I eliminate this middleman and be agent directly to the one of the big primary petroleum companies such as mm. Chevron, Shell, or Texaco. At that time, let me say, at that time there was no internet and all this stuff. So every big city in the states, they used to bring Sunday papers from all over the states. You can get it. Then you can see the ads for properties for sale. I used to, I stopped working, I used to just filter those. Oh. So I came back, I went six and a half months driving, looking for a property. So, because I have a cash, I have the choice. So finally, I found another gas station for sale. 
in Seattle, Washington, suburb of Seattle, Washington, city called Bathel. It was belonged to Texaco. That's what I was looking for to keep the middleman out. The Texaco, they interviewed me. Immediately they approved me too because I've done all these things that they require a person to do. They don't consider just only the money okay. for the expert and somebody who can actually enhance or improve the property. I bought that place too, 225. In two years, because I improved it, I sold it a million dollars. Well, I became a millionaire. My first time I became a millionaire was 97. 1997. 97. I and don't know, you were about 10 years old? Well, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> and I, I want to know what would <coughs> happen to you after all this? Why do you have to leave all of that and move back to Africa? What I realized, that's it. I've never, I've never seen somebody ask me that question. <laughs> I've, as, as I told you, I've realized every idea, everything you want to do, it's already been done in the States. So you become a franchisee rather than franchisor. So I have to move there, that's one thing. The second thing, Africa is a virgin. Africa is a, a abundant of resources and, as much, and also abundant of consumers. We are, you know, 50, 50 countries, 50 plus countries, what, 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 two or almost two, two semi-billion people. It's, a, it's, a, it's, 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 it's actually a virgin. Place to make money. Make, not only money, to become a pioneer. Because what I, you know, when I read and, and I see things, I see the wealth of, of, of Africa is being siphoned by the Western. Then they sell back to Africa with a million times percent. With the raw material, cheap raw material, they took it back to them. It's like what's happening right now, DRC. Yeah. You know, almost every, 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 every iPhone, iPhone it has a lit. Yes. They buy in the peanuts. They sell back to us thousands of dollars. So that's one thing. The second thing, where do I have to start this? I have to come back to my roots. Because we, we believe in a Somali prefab. When you do your thing, you can, do, you can help the others. So first, start with your own self. Then you can help others, just like what you do. It. You did your thing, you went to China, you're looking good. So you have to help the brothers, exactly. like me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> What the Mayo? I'm not here to help you. You have to help me. I want to be a millionaire too, man. Right? But you know, you, you came back. When you were coming back, nobody told you getting crazy for coming back to Africa? Oh my God. Not only crazy, to be honest with you, mm. I have to talk to you. I never thought I would come back to Africa. Let alone, I would never visit back to Africa. Let alone I would leave. <laughs> I never thought because I became a, I almost became a sports agent in the States. Me and my partners, some black brothers who used to play football, you get injured. But mm. I became like, you know, I get, I intermingle with them. So when I came back, one of the, the other thing that I want to come back is my own country. Because this country has been actually put back for several reasons. One is the previous regime, the dictator Siad Barre. Second is a tribal. And I have to educate them in a democracy and, and, and my people to learn how to live, how to live in a, in a what do you call it, peaceful way. way. How can they help each other? How can not to fight with the tribe? They are one, one nation. Not only Somalis, I consider Africa is one tribe. Yeah. Even humans are one tribe. They're from Arab. Exactly. So uh, when I, I moved into, I moved from the States, mm. I didn't move right away to back to here. I've stayed in UAE, you know, so I can adjust a little bit. I've lived in Sharjah for three years. I get married there, not this wife, but other wife. And uh, I've lived there for three years, I keep back and forth. Then I've seen there are some opportunities available here, such as tendering. There's a prepared port. It's not being used. And Ethiopia, as you know, is over 100 million people with yeah. land luck. Exactly. So there was a, there was an, uh, this called Berbera Corridor. It's been pushed by the EU. And, and, uh, and that time another entity used to call Uranid, which was also from EU. Yeah. They want to open this corridor for Ethiopia. There was some tendering. 
I involved those tenders, then I won. I've stayed here, which I, I initially wants to face it, but when I won, I've stayed six months. Then I stopped, you know, left in Berbera. Then I, I opened this gate. You know, like, you know now, DP wall is in Berbera. No, no, Actually, no. I'm the one who opened this gate. Berbera to Utopia. Whoa. Sport, I'm the one who pioneered it. Yes, I became the biggest tobacco, one of the biggest tobacco dealer in the country. But I don't smoke, I get out. I, I've seen it, it's not really something that I want to be or promote. <laughs> it's almost like a killing people, you know, yeah. and cancer and stuff, you know. <laughs> then I start the media. Oh. Same time I was actually in the tobacco because in, in, I, I always used to think how I can transform my people from tribal to democracy and stuff. That's when I started uh, Home Cable TV. And how long has Home Cable TV been in existence? Almost now, what, what, what? 18 years, 2003, 2003. Then 2008, I went to satellite called Tycho, which you can see all over Africa. Wow. Then 2010, I moved to Hartberg, which you can see all over the world. The content that we have up here. We became actually big part of the transformation of three governments here. With the, uh, I first, when I first came here, there was Egal, the, the founder of this country. country yeah. He passed away. Then, when I, and the second one was Riale, that's when I started the TV. Mm. Riale, fallout, I was a big part of that because I thought it was not, the government was not actually working the way it's supposed, it's supposed to. to we became a, almost like a voice for the oppositions. And I consider we were one of the pillars to brought to the governing the Colmia party. At that time was led by ex-president Ahmed Sinai, mm. one of the nicest person you can meet. But you, you don't want to run for presidency? And, and uh, to be honest with you, I never thought about involving politics. But I've, I'm contemplating that because there's a, in politics in this country, there's a big gap. In fact, in Africa, exactly. the population are youth, almost 70 plus percent are youth, like people like you. And the rulers are all 70 plus. There's a big gap. There's a misunderstanding. There's a, what do you call, a lack of, what do you call, openness. Mm. And be, nowadays, people like you have to govern yeah. because it's a digital age, and you can actually. And I consider you are not. You know, very. It will be very rare for youth like you to become corrupt. Exactly. But the older ones, they doing the same regime. What the others used to do, just to siphon the source and the wealth from the public, from the people of the country, for their own use. They never use that money. They put it in a, in, a, in a banks or some some place, because he thinks something that you didn't work when you keep grabbing it. If you use, it might vanish. But when you worked, you know how to use it, and that, because you know how to do it. So one of the biggest problems in Africa is all leaders who are corrupt. You, you surprise some guy who is a seventy plus, who is stealing from people. Where is he going to take it to? He's going to take it to it, just like what happened to, what do you call, Mobutu. Yeah. He took billions out of his own country and never seen it back. Well, these banks that you are taking it to, they know that you have stole from your country. Once you die, nobody knows because you, you have hidden. Exactly, and they use it. So one of my things that I want to I wanna be part of it, that's transformation of African leaders to become a youth. Not the old man. The old has to retire. Listen, I, yeah. I want to I, I wanna ask you this question. If you had the chance, yeah, to change one thing in Africa, what would that? Uh, to be honest with you, is I have to. We, we have to create a a watchdog, which is a corrupted corruption watchdog, which has been actually created. It has to be created, and Westerners has to help with that. So we can actually know the corrupt leaders, their accounts, what they're taking. But can you imagine with the mayor? There's a, some guys coming to govern. 
He never worked in his life. He, he doesn't have the money. First year he becomes a millionaire. millionaire. He's taking the, the, the tax that's been collected from the people. He's buying, he's buying land, he's taking over the farms, he's taking the, you know, and the, and people, you know, the, the public, they are not dumbs, but they don't want to, again, to become a migrants. Just like we started right now in Mogadishu, I'm very sad about that, you know? They said, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be internal war, war, which is not needed. And it's all happening by dumb, old, corrupt leaders who are only thinking by themselves. People who are dying, people like your age. Most of these corrupt leaders, their kids are overseas. They are looking for, they are in a, getting good education. Huh? They are in a peaceful place, but the people who are dying is the poor people up here. In order for them to stay in power and steal the wealth of their own country and from their own people. But I, I want to be part of that. I want to stop that thing. Not all, I consider Africa is a one nation. We are all brothers and sisters. Thank you. You know, we look alike. Thank you. If I go to Ghana now, no, they will no consider me Ghanese. Yeah, exactly. I go to Ethiopia, they consider me Ethiopia. Okay. I go to Kenya, they consider me Kenya. So... Is it, um, since you have um, love for the youth to take over Africa, definitely you have a message for the youth watching us right now, because I have a lot of youth watching us at this very moment. What Absolutely. will be your message for them? Just empower yourselves. Make a change. If you don't change and actually take it the risk and what do you call the guts and uh, endurance, you will stay the, the, the way you are. We're all going to be migrating to, to, West, to Europe and America. Why are we going there? What the corrupt leaders in Africa? Since you, since you youth are almost the majority of Africa now, you need to take over your own country. I can, uh, with one of the things that I'm actually proud of, all of you, is being educated, either online. So I didn't stop my education. I came back and also continue my education. I get educated myself. So one of the things that I encourage them, encourage of you to get educated, that's the, that's the best wealth. It never goes away from, even if the worst dictator comes, he will not siphon that from you. He can take your money, but he cannot take your knowledge. I'm here in, uh, in Somaliland. A lot of things have been taken away from me, but they will never get my knowledge. I will create and again and again. I will replicate the yeah. same thing. So the youth, they need to realize they can lead. They can govern. They can make the change for their own countries and to some extent to the continent. Otherwise, we're going to be recolonized again. again. Because in uh, Europe is finished. There's no source, resources. America is finished. There's no resources. Asia, same thing. Latin America, some extent. The only thing the world has now is Africa. Abundant of resources. And to be honest with you, humans are savage. They're going to have an interest to come back and to colonize again. And it's going to happen again if we don't stop the corrupt old leaders. That's my message. You live in a very beautiful environment. You did all this by yourself? I did this by myself <laughs> and I'm enjoying it. To be honest wow. with you, I love living here. Uh -huh. I love living with my own people. I'm an American citizen, by the way. Yeah. But I love seeing black people. I've seen the different change that's going on. Mm. There's a change going. Yeah. I have a word, I'm very much optimistic about the youth to become in power by their own countries. Yeah. And I'm very much optimistic there will be a transformation in Africa. Africans to govern and live by their own countries mm -hmm. and their own continent mm -hmm. rather than in a, in, in a foreigner. You That's my. What he's trying my. to say is that Africa for Africans. That's what he's trying to say. That's the I message. Have, that's the message. We've got a lot of Africans living in the diaspora. Mm -hmm. If you have a message for them, what would that message be? My message is for them to come back to their own roots, to their countries, before they've been kicked out where they are. Because Africans, you know, uh, Africa belongs to Africans. And Africans in diaspora 
lately, as it happens, you know, uh, they've been actually experiencing in a, what do you call it, racial discrimination stuff. I, I actually like to see that most of the time, you know, they've been discriminated, the Africans. So I want them to come back to, to their own countries and to make the change and to be implemented what they have learned from there. I, I really don't want them to remain there, get educated, learn, to exp get experience from there and to come back and implement that to your own countries and to your continent. Definitely with everybody, Caucasian, Asians, Latinos, uh, whatever, they're all coming back to Africa, I'll be honest with you. All other continents, their resources have been siphoned and it's been almost marginalized. The only place is virgin resources, uh, what do you call it, population, everything's in Africa. So you all need to come back before you've been recolonized your own countries. If you stay in Europe, if you stay in America, I guarantee you for the coming 20, 30, 20, 30 years, you will get a visa, you will ask visa to come back for your own countries, and you'll be given a visa and all that by Westerners for your own country and continent. So you need to come back ASAP and help your own people, help your own country. I want to say thank you so much for talking to me. I appreciate your time and thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you very much with the Mayo. Thank you. I know it's, it's not a joke for you to come into here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You are a man bound to make a change. I am actually encourage you to continue with that. Thank you. I look forward to seeing you again. And please, brother, keep continue to empower, to educate, and to encourage Thank you. young black Africans Africa. to become leaders and rulers and people who can make their own country and continent. I appreciate you so much. Thank you.